Last year, some of the runners jumped the gun at the start. There was danger of a pileup at that time. That caused the official to rethink the whole situation on the start. Larry Rawson has a report on that now. Two things, Jim, have been changed at the starting line this year. For safety reasons, the 75-millimeter gun used to start the race will be fired on the far side of the bridge, and a backup gun will be in place in case of a misfiring. And to improve the race control at the start this year, technical race director Alan Steinfeld invited all of the policemen and firemen running this year's race from all over the world to act as marshals, and 250 of them will be on hand to try and ensure a smooth exit from the starting line. Mayor David Dinkins is scheduled for the last time to fire the cannon for the start. Certain symbolism there because the last shot of the Revolutionary War was fired at Fort Wadsworth, which is just under the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Very close now, Marty. There's the lead car. The runners stretching out. It'll take them many minutes to even get across the starting line. Well, you saw Fred LeBeau in the Mercedes, and of course, when that mishap happened at the start last year, Fred was running in the race, and everyone said, well, after 24 years, the first year Fred wasn't there, something <laughs> happened. Right. Well, he's there at the time. There is the cannon, and there it goes. That was the mayor pulling the trigger. The New York City Marathon, the 24th, is underway. Going over that bridge, by the way, is the steepest climb of the entire race. It's also a special experience in a number of ways. Why don't we watch right now and listen to the comments of some runners who have made this fantastic journey. Well, the first thing on the bridge, the one part of your body that you're really connected to is your heart, because it's pounding. And you look around to strangers, hoping for some sign of encouragement. Eh, forget it. They're all too nervous, or they need this time to psych themselves. I mean, it's very exciting, it's very scary, but the race has started, and off you go. It's a frightening experience, and it's an overwhelming experience, and my only thought was, please don't fall down, because you'll never get up. It, it's a, like a quiet noise. You just hear people chatting among themselves, and you hear their feet. You hear the helicopters overhead, and you look out, and you, and you see the, the fireboats shooting the water off, and the emotion starts building up right then and there. A lot of people, you know, don't realize that the bridge shakes as you're, as you're running and everything, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's almost kind of scary, but at the same time, it's, it's very spectacular and it's very exciting. I guess it's kind of like uh, the last five minutes before somebody's getting married, you know, you kind of don't know what to do. For all those months while you're training for the marathon, you, you, you're, you're questioning yourself. Am I doing the right training? Have I trained enough miles? And now it's over. You know, you can't think about that anymore because here you are. You put yourself on the line, and all you can do is put one foot in front of the other. Well, the first thing that I think is that uh, where the hell is the finish line? Fine. I tell you, these shots just get more remarkable. There's Lin Swan. Like we told you it'd take many minutes before everybody gets to the starting line. He hasn't reached it yet. It's a nice walk right now, Jim. Oh, okay. Here this is time. Good luck, Lin. Thank you. Uh, well, I don't know where that camera is, but we have cameras all over the place. We have one up on top we're going to show you in a minute. Here are the men's leaders at the moment. And uh, some of them you will see later. Some of them you will not see after they get off the bridge. As for the best in the world in this event, they do not call them world records because the courses vary so much, but the world best was set by the Ethiopian Belen Densimo, 2.06.50. That's an incredible time. And, and that was at Rotterdam. The American record by Salazar at Boston, not at New York, 2.08.52. The New York City record set by Juma Ikanga of Tanzania. And you saw that time there. Of course, the third one, which is a New York City Marathon course record of 2.08.50, one was probably the greatest race ever won because this course is nowhere near as fast as the, those other two courses. Well, let's take a look at the women's best in the marathon event right now. There are some of the women, the leaders at the moment. World best, Ingrid Christensen of Norway. That was uh, way back in 1985 in London. American record, Jones Samuelson in Chicago in 85. New York was just last year. Lisa Andiecki of Australia set that time. You f is it the same situation there? No, I don't think so. I think Ingrid Christensen's race in London was 
probably better than the record here in New York. Uta Pipic said she would like to get the course record here, but with the temperatures, that's going to be tough. Okay, as we said, the temperature warm. It's supposed to get up to 68, which would be one of the warmest November 14th in the history of New York. This is one of the longest single suspension bridges in the world, built, uh, well, within the last, I guess, about 30 years ago, uh, spanning New York Harbor. It opened up Staten Island to the rest of New York dramatically, and now Staten Island has just voted to secede. Not formally yet, but uh, the sentiment was there in the vote just about 10 days ago. Flags of many nations being held up. And there are 100 countries represented this year at all 50 states. Uh, naturally, the largest number from New York State, about 8,000. The smallest number from South Dakota. They just have two guys out there. North Dakota has four. Espinoza up with the leaders already. He was second last year. And the year before, so he's right up there. Paul Pilkington is the leader. He's from Utah, but he is probably in there to set a pace through the first half of the race. Who would you expect to would, would lead, say, four, five, eight miles into it? Well, I'm actually surprised that there aren't some of the top Kenyan runners up there who are very good at the shorter distances, who feel that this early pace is slow. So they're showing some real restraint here by hanging back, and that's a good sign. The Kenyans who, as kids, often run to school eight or 10 miles a day, right? Distance comes naturally to death. There's a shot from our camera poised on top of one of the great towers. Our cameraman up there is 600 feet in the air looking down on the race. Now that's the shot he gets. And how does he get it? We're going to show you that in a minute, I believe. As you look, that's this an interesting picture right there. There's people swarming over the bridge. All of them making the effort of a lifetime. And if you even finish this course, no matter how long it takes you, it's something to tell your grandchildren about, no question. Well, it's certainly an exciting moment. It's a scary moment. I'm sure Lynn has received double coverage before, but he's never been yeah, covered like this. No question about that. And you'll see the faces all the way, too. When they get near the finish, you can see those eyes and see the weariness and the determination. Well, the, we had a shot of two gentlemen who were out in front of this group, which includes uh, Pilkington number 13. So two men have shot out, but they're not real contenders. You can see they didn't have really low numbers. Espinoza, with a second place the last two years, has to be considered one of the favorites, and he's right up there. He usually comes from off the pace to grab second or third place in races, but he's right up there. With the adrenaline uh, pumping at the start, is there any tendency to run too fast? Oh, there's no question about it. And this is what we saw last year with the Kenyans. There were a number of Kenyans in the race who had a great summer of running the short races on the roads. They jumped into the marathon. They got excited. They ran the first 15 miles of the race too fast and then finished 17th place, 18th place. Lamech Aguda. There you see the women's lead pack, Pipping, Gorangulova of Russia, and Marie Letko of the United States still hanging in there in third place. Well, well behind, but hanging in. She's out in her first marathon, so she, if she can finish in the top five, anyone would consider that a success, but Anne Marie had thoughts of winning and running under 230 in her head. Okay, there's the top of the screen. You can see the relationship, not too well, but you can see it. And uh, again, there's another man with Uta Pivig taking a look behind her. Looks like she was asking somebody something. Who's she talking to, I wonder? What, and, and about what? Well, I think she'd like to know how far in the lead she is. As you look at Sammy Lele, who has now taken a little bit of a lead. Now, Sammy ran in this race last year, wasn't quite prepared, did not run well. And he's much better prepared this year. A number of the Kenyans will come to New York just for the experience the first year and not have trained specifically for it. Because you can't decide when you're hot on the circuit, as he was last year, to just a month ahead of time decide you're going to run the New York City Marathon. It takes at least a six-month build-up, and that's what he's done this year. So if I were behind him, I would not be counting on him to come back this year. Spent the last three months training back home in Kenya, which was intelligent of him. Made his marathon debut in New York uh, in 1992. Last year, finished 17th, but sixth then. Since then, he ran in Boston, uh, finished fifth, and had a personal record. So as you say, he's building up not falling back. 
As a matter of fact, in Boston, he finished just in front of the eventual world champion, Mark Podges, the former South African, now an American citizen. Okay, Larry, some comments from you then. Jim, right now it's Lele up in front, but no more than five or six strides behind is Moses Tanui, number four. Next to him, the man who's been the bridesmaid for the last couple of years, Andres Espinoza from Mexico. A few steps behind him, number 33, is uh, uh, Andrew Masai, and right behind Masai is number 25. Back there is Bob Campen, and there you're looking at Espinoza, and they're all running well. I think that there is probably eight people here with five miles left to go who could win this race. Perhaps 100 yards behind the leader is still Arturo Barrios and Lucas Swartboy from Namibia. Very interesting race up here. American Bob Campanen is still in it. So an American still... By John Han